a Friday afternoon comes to a close, and in the small town of Crum, Texas, that means it's time for football. However, tonight's game is different. Tonight, home team fans will cheer on the opposing team to tackle, sack, and score against their own sons, friends, and brothers. Tonight, they cheer for a school called Gainesville State. Located just 30 miles up the highway, yet seemingly a world away, Gainesville State School is a maximum security facility for youth offenders. To be a student here is to be a convicted criminal. What kind of things have the boys done to be at the Gainesville State School? Anything from, you know, um, burglary or, you know, aggravated robbery, assault. All of them are felony crimes. We don't have youth with misdemeanors. Okay, so once they're here, it's serious business. Yes. Here, students that serve the majority of their sentence plus meet strict academic and behavioral standards earn a shot at the school's slightest brush with the outside world. The chance to play football. But as every game is an away game in a competitive and sometimes hostile environment, players find defeated seasons reflections of defeated lives. My peers around me that play on the same team, I haven't heard them being called racial slurs and all kinds of other stuff by an opposing players. They're trying to prove a point that we already lost our chance to play high school football by the decisions we made. You gonna take hand the ball to fullback? He's hitting. Right now, what kind of support do these kids get from their homes? Not much. A lot of them are, you know, maybe one parent. Families, maybe no parents. They weren't given the the chance of having a, you know, a mom and dad at home, and. Uh, that's a sad, sad thing. Heading into their final 2008 game against Grapevine Faith Christian School, Gainesville State players look to end a demoralizing season. However, Grapevine Faith coach Chris Hogan right there, Johnny looked to end something entirely different, a pattern of failure. When I saw them on the schedule, we felt like here are 16, 17, 18-year-old kids, and they're somebody's little boy and they're locked up in prison. So the idea was to just give them hope, give them the natural <laughs> hopelessness that is normal in prison life. When the boys arrived, we had fixed them a meal, shared the gospel with them that day before the game, and we have a big banner for them. They run through the banner. We have people who made spirit signs, and then half of our crowd literally goes across, and we have a roster with their name and, and cheer for them. So they got the same experience that most every other kid in Texas gets on a Friday night. I was surprised. I was like, they would call us by our names and everything. And at first, we thought that they had another player with the same name. So I didn't know what to think. It was just, I don't know, it was just something I felt like God was just touching, up, touching upon all of us and letting us know that there's people out there that care about you. They could care less what we was in here for or the crime we committed, and they want to love us like their own kids. In the two years since Coach Hogan and Grapevine Faith's display of encouragement, others have stepped up on their own will to continue the effort. Tonight, it's Crum Volunteer Youth Leader, Brenda Kirk. When I initially started, I, my plans were to invite the other churches in town to just sit with our church on the visitor side and cheer for the boys. And it just got a whole lot bigger than that really quick. <laughs> Man, I tell you what, those kids, they don't get a lot of support. Uh, they would really yeah. appreciate it. Sure. What, what time is that going to be? It's a 7.30 game. When I heard about the effort going on, I talked to my boss. And 96.3 KSES decided that we would just volunteer to help promote the event. We really just want to show these guys the love of Christ. And we want to show these boys that they matter. As word got out, a community responded. Local businesses donated pregame meals. Crum High School provided their visiting team both a band and a cheer squad and a spirit line formed that charged up fans and players alike. That's why I'm a teacher and a coach, is, is to do things like this. Every day we, we, we do it for our kids right here in Crumb, but to, to go outside of Crumb and to do it for others is very special. The Gainesville kid recognized we might be wearing helmets, but there's something bigger happening. And I think what they found out was people believe in them. The kids would tell me they were calling my name. My number. And they were cheering for me. And I don't even know those people. And that offers an encouragement to them that they have not seen probably in a lifetime.